Hello and welcome to another episode of Call Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. And today on Call Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Okay, I'll stop doing that now. I'm going to turn this into this. So here are all the parts. They're just various bits and bobs that I have laying around. And with them, I'm going to make a high voltage DC power supply. Or to be more precise, a rectified mains DC power supply. And here you she shirk it, uh. So, I'm gonna go through a little brief walkthrough of the circuit so you can see what I'm actually planning on doing. Now, in between the two transformers on the low side, you can see a switch because both of these transformers have center tap secondaries. I think it's 27027, I think, if I remember. It's not really gonna matter just so long as they both have the same voltages. And so this way, if I have the switch in the up position, then the full 27 volts or whatever will come out of this transformer, go into this transformer, and then get stepped up to 240 again. If I have it in the lower position, then we'll get... Can't think of it off the top of my head, but, um, yeah, we'll get about 120 volts coming out of that transformer, so I can select. Next on, we have a full bridge rectifier, and some smoothing capacitors, a resistor to discharge the capacitors when it's not in use and a light bulb in series with the output so I can select the amount of power screw in a more powerful light bulb more power out screw in a less power light bulb less power out so I've got some control over that and up here we've got a voltage doubler for another output circuit which is gonna give us about 650 volts or a uh, 340 depending on you know where I've got this switch set up and of course finally we've got an earth wire that should goes straight to the ground and that will be connected to whatever ground I'm using depending on whichever output I'm using so yeah the next thing I want to do is work out where I'm going to put the two transformers and I think round about here is going to be the best place to put them nice and close to the switch and the nice thing about this switch is it's a big beefy switch and it's not just a simple toggle switch, we have neutral, on, neutral, other on. So I can use this switch to select the voltage, and I can use this switch to turn the transformers on and off. It will do double duty. You know something really weird happened today? Water fell from the sky! Can you believe that? Water fell from the sky! I think I remember what that stuff is. Rain! It's been so long since that's happened that I almost forgot what it was. The wiring has started. So I'm using the bottom side of the switch to switch the power on and off. I've also decided I'll put the fuse in line with the live wire. And this side of the switch is obviously going to be used for our output voltage selection. Of course it would help if I was actually pointing the camera at it. Alright, so this is how I'm going to put the transformers in. Now, it may not be the most pristine artistic way that other YouTubers do it. It might not be the best way. It might not be the most... whatever. I just do what works. Also putting the transformer here. It's nice and close to the switch so the wires don't have to reach too far. Alright, first one in. Now just got to put the other transformer in and the rectifiers and stuff and we'll be done. At least it's not sunny today. That makes a change. Now this is more my kind of sky. Just the right kind of atmosphere for working on projects and things like that. Both of the transformers are in. So this transformer is going to take the mains voltage and step it down to either 52 or 28 volts, depending on which tap I use. And then this transformer is going to step it back up to 120 or 240. Again, depending on which tap I've used on the first transformer. So the next thing to do is put the rectifiers in, but I think before I do that, but I just test that this thing is actually doing what it should be doing. Well, it's been about 17,000 years, and I really want to test this thing. And a rainy day would really complement this well, but... Uh, Sun just won't let up, so I'm just going to have to do it now. So, all we got here is we've got my meter, 
measuring the output of this transformer. And this transformer, I've got the primary in series with the light bulb, so if anything goes wrong, all that's going to happen is this light bulb is going to light up and it's going to limit the current, so nothing's going to go up in smoke. So when I turn the switch this way, we should have either 120 or 240 volts coming out of this transformer. And the other way, it should be the uh, other way around. It should be, you know, 240, 120, whatever. Let's see what we get when we switch it one way. I'm expecting this bulb to only come on a little bit, if nothing at all. And we have 120 volts. So, if I turn the switch the other way, we should now have 240. And yes, we do. So, 240 volts that way. 120 volts that way. And when the switch is in its center position, it's off. So this is where everything's going to go. This is the voltage doubler for the 6... And yes, I have unplugged this. For the 650 volt out. This is the rectifier for the... 240... Well, be like 340 when it's rectified. And then, of course, i got to drill the hole, put the terminal blocks in, and... Uh, we'll be done, but I've got to wire all this stuff up. That's going to be a nightmare. Whole rat's nest of wiring in there. And there it is. It's all wired up. Well, I just got to put the edge connector on the edge there, but, um, didn't need to drill a hole because there's already a hole for the wires to go through. So, uh, yeah, that's good. So we got our rectifier for the 170 or 340 volts DC, which is what these wires are going to. And this thing here, According to the calculator, it's going to be about 670 volts, but got to take into consideration the voltage drop across these diodes, which are microwave diodes, and that's probably like 8 volts or so. And yeah, I know one of those capacitors is bigger. They're both 400 volt capacitors at 330 microfarads. This one is just bigger because it wants to be. So here we are. This is the finished power supply. So this is where the mains comes in. And this is where the 300 and 600 volts comes out. And of course, I have bleeder resistors across the capacitors. I know some of you who are obsessed with health and safety are freaking out right now at this design. This is just a temporary setup for the output terminals. It is going to be better than this. But anyway, this is our 650 volt out positive and our 650 volt out negative and this is the um what is it now 340 volts negative and 340 volts positive that is with the switch in the high voltage position and low voltage position this would be like 340 and this would be like 170 but according to ohm's law having just one one mega resistor across the capacitors of the high voltage outputs you know the 650 volt output that's going to dissipate about mm, 4, I mean 0.42 watts, so I've just put two of those in series. Okay, so let's test this thing. Now I've got my meter connected to the 170 or 340 volts out. I'm going to put the switch one way, and we have almost 170 volts. Now let's do it the other way. We have about 333 volts. So it's a little bit under what I thought it would be, but, uh, you know, I've got account for losses in the transformers and everything. And now we're going to test the 650 volt out. Now, I'm only going to do this on the low setting, because we should have about 340 volts. And I don't want to try it on the high because I don't know how high this meter is rated for, but let's try it on the low setting. We should have... Yeah, that's about right. Taking into account the losses in the diodes and the transformers. What am I going to use this power supply for? Well, I've got a few Tesla coil experiments coming up where I'm going to need rectified mains voltage. And... That's what these two terminals are here. These two terminals here are for. 
And there's also going to be some tube related stuff, which is what the 650 volts output is for. Anyway, you can see that this works, and well, I'm going to wrap it up for now because I've probably got like 50,000 video files to edit. So, until next time, goodbye.